question about um, student learning. Can you show us an artifact um, other than the one that you showed us, the, the one student who was excited about having um, been reading outside of class? Can you show us something that your students might have struggled with that you were proud of how you worked through it with them? of articles in order to engage with the text in a way that used the plot. So a crime article or a political article. Um, and a way that interacted with the characters, so a, like biography or a obituary. And then two soft news, news articles. And we really, um, we struggled with what <coughs> these hard articles were as opposed to what the soft articles were. And so I ended up doing a series of mini lessons including a story, newspaper story outline where I asked them to write the type of article, what the purpose and the audience was for writing. For instance, one student said, I'm writing an obituary, but you say it sounds more like a crime article, what am I doing wrong? And so I was able to stop that student and say, okay, who's reading an obituary? And he said, you know, the, the people's families. And I said, okay, do they want to hear about how he was brutally murdered and left for dead back behind the house? And he said, no, I, I guess probably not. He wants to hear about how he was a good person. And so what my students, ooh, oh, so what my students came out with was this very nice obituary about Banquo, <coughs> where he wrote, the war hero and general of Scotland, Banquo, is dead after 40 years. According to servants, Banquo and his son Fleance were walking to Macbeth's house for a dinner, and they were ambushed. Banquo was extremely brave and could handle anything that was thrown at him. He was a great man and a brilliant general. Being a friend of the great Macbeth, you would think that we, he would have been a lot like him, but actually he was almost the complete opposite. Banquo took the path opposite Macbeth, the one that took him into a bright future, and one that would involve his kids becoming kings. And it really showed how they were able to understand it when it was presented to them. Um, that it wasn't a flaw in the design, it was a flaw in my formative assessment. Of all your um, um, like in-task principles, or all your standards, which one do you think you um, enjoyed or, or, or is, uh, got the uh, the strongest series of artifacts, and which of the in-task principles did you struggle with most of kind of all artifacts again? Um, the assessments were actually really hard. It was hard to find artifacts that demonstrated what I had wanted them to do. And I think part of that is because I wasn't very clear in my instructions at the beginning, and that grew more toward the end. Um, so I was struggling to show a range of assessments that still showed strong, strongly what I was trying to assess. The one I had the most fun with was the various types of medias. Um, using the pictures from the movie and then you incorporating movie clips and using songs. I played the Double Doubles Will and Trouble song from Harry Potter for the one of my Macbeth days. That was so much fun to me, and watching the way the students responded to it was wonderful. I just had a quick question about, um, you said that you want to continue being a lifelong learner and you think you have the skills to continue to be reflective. 
Um, can you maybe show us some uh, some artifacts or examples of early reflective practice, and then something that you've done just recently that sort of shows your growth, and maybe give us a trajectory of how you, where you're headed. First and foremost, I want to make sure I move with purpose. I noticed myself. <coughs> flexibility here working with the smart board when it didn't work to switch over to the computer, not show any surprise. But next time I'd really like to test out the technology first to make sure I knew what was and wasn't working. And that type of reflection, it, it did edge a little bit on what I was actually doing, but not in a particularly reflective way. It was very surface level. And then I immediately switched over again into what I was doing wrong what I needed to do next time so that I didn't look like an idiot. Um, by contrast, I have a much greater, um, a greater proportion of this video involves discussing why I made the choices I made, and because I was putting a lot more thought into the choices I was making beforehand, they worked a lot better in the classroom as well. The clips for this test review come from two periods, um, from my second period class and from my fifth period class. They were taken from about a 10 minute unit test review on the day of the test, um, a warm up review section. We had a time crunch with the end of the grading period, and so I didn't have time to set aside for a full day review, but that's definitely something after this experience that I want to do in the future. The day before the test, I gave students this vague study guide. Um, I had made it vague so that it would cause them to think about the answers. It would make them put in the effort, go look up the answers. It would guide their thinking without handing them the answers to the test. We've been over this in class. I had things like know the themes, know the general layout of Victorian London. Um, after discussing this setup with my cooperating teacher, we came to the conclusion that the students who took tests during the, or took notes during the unit, who are going to put in the effort to study for the test, who will actually read the study guide and find the information, are the students who are going to do well on the test anyway. They would do that even if they didn't have a study guide. <laughs> the students who are really relying on the study guide, haven't taken those notes, aren't going to put in that effort. And so to help support those students, I really should give them the study guide with the answers on. And so I go through the rest of this unit review really thinking about how to do it better in the future so that the students get the most out of it they can. <laughs> 